listen, I am not proud of my behavior. It all happened so fast. I walked into Ulta to swatch one foundation. I couldn't even find my perfect shade match. I put it down. I'm about to walk away. And then I find myself over here swatching this, over here grabbing that, trying to convince myself I don't need any of this. And then I'm in line having spent $175 on new makeup that I am going to share with you today. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole, and today we are doing a full face of new makeup. So I got sucked in at Ulta, plain and simple. There were so many displays up, I just felt like I needed to buy everything. It's almost holiday time, so they're starting to launch those little kits, like the stocking stuffers, and I thought this was a great way to test out some products I've really been wanting to try. Now you guys know that I'm a firm believer in shopping your stash, but every once in a while, you just gotta buy some new makeup. So we're testing out the Smashbox Full Coverage Foundation. I'm gonna give you guys a full dissertation on this. I have the ColourPop uh, Designer Collection, the Disney Princess stuff. I'm really excited about that. I have a couple new bronzers, some eyelashes, some liners, some eyeshadow. So if you are interested in hanging out for a little bit and testing out some hyped up new makeup, go ahead and keep watching. All right, so we are nice and close and you guys can see I'm having some skin troubles right now. I don't know what this is right here. Normally, I don't get any kind of spots up there. It almost looks like a pimple, but I'm not sure what it is, but it's okay, it happens, it's that time of the month. And then I've got this guy right here as well. So we've got some stuff to cover today, which is nice, because typically I don't have any spots. So let's get started here with this Smashbox Photo Finish Star Power Primer Set. So we have the Photo Finish Primerizer, Primer Water, and Photo Finish smooth and blur primer. This was $22, which I think is a great price. These are really good sizes, especially for traveling. I'm gonna be doing some traveling coming up and I thought this would be absolutely perfect for that. I cannot stand having to travel with full size products. And for $22, I think this is a bargain. You guys tell me what you think, but I haven't had a Smashbox primer, like a full Smashbox primer, in a very long time. I'm just gonna start to kind of use this stuff. Let's go ahead and try the primerizer. I did use my Embryo Lease, which is like my version of a primerizer, but it's been a while. So I'm just gonna, I wanna see kind of like the texture of it. It's very runny. It's not very like moisturizer-like, but we'll go ahead and I guess do this and then take the photo finish primer kind of right where I have visible pores. But anyway, Smashbox reminds me of my like learning makeup days. I'll I'll never forget the woman who I kind of like apprenticed under. Um, she gave me a Smashbox like liner. I think it was a liner brush, and I still have that brush to this day. It just reminds me of like the days of when I learned makeup and when I used to do bridal makeup. It was just a fun time, and that was like. Smashbox was like the makeup brand along with MAC. I am gonna take that photo finish smooth and blur primer on, wow. I think this needs to be shaken up because I just kind of pushed it and all that like what looks like oily stuff came out. So we're gonna shake that up. But anyway, Smashbox was like the hot makeup brand. That was like half of my kit was Smashbox and the other half was like Makeup Forever and MAC before we had, no, I guess this just is kind of like a clear runny consistency. Interesting. I'm just gonna put this right around here. But anyway, yeah, I, I miss those days when it was very selective with brands and you know, I mean, it's nice that we now have a lot of options and there's a ton of brands depending on what your budget is, but boy, was buying makeup easier then? <laughs> you didn't have product, like, I mean, there was barely even marketing around brands like there is today. It's just crazy how the makeup world has grown. It's it's truly amazing. So anyway, both of those feel pretty good. We'll see how they perform under makeup. I did get the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. So these should work well together. I am gonna just put my hair up real quick for this because it's gonna get in the way. All right, so when I went to swatch this, I was in there swatching for, I'm not kidding you, 25 minutes trying to find the right undertone and the right shade. I swatched every single fair and every single light shade 
and nothing seemed to match like by far they all seemed to oxidize to like an orange undertone i ended up going with a fair warm olive undertone there was which is 1.05 there was a 1.1 and that seemed like it was going to be okay but then it seemed like again it was going to be too orange and they were sold out of it so i got kind of just sick of it and i went with this and i'm hoping it's going to match but i you guys have to let me know if you guys have swatched this and if you had a hard time with it because i have never had such a hard time with trying to find the right undertone and color they i mean i'm not normally a fair color and this is fair so just this is one you're going to want to swatch and try to get as close as possible in store do not buy this one online it also seemed like it was extremely full coverage which is why i just went in very lightly i'm trying to debate grabbing a brush i think i am going to grab a brush and then go in with my makeup sponge over it let's see what it says it just says blend well so i'm just gonna grab this sigma f83 and we'll see see like now it looks way too light it feels extremely lightweight i will tell you that like very lightweight i'm probably gonna have to go in with a little more here i actually feel like that matches my neck pretty dang good Put a little too much on the nose there as you could see so i'm gonna try to blend that up yeah i mean i i don't even feel like i have anything on my face as i'm blending this out which i like a lot i am fairly certain this is supposed to have a pretty natural finish if not like dewy and i feel like it's not extremely dewy right now but i'll have to read but for that amount of foundation which was a very very tiny bit i have pretty much got my full face covered I'm just gonna grab my sponge and kind of work whoa my nose looks horrible horrible I have not used a foundation that has looked that shit on my nose for a very long time I'm gonna try to build up the coverage a little bit I just put a bit on the back of my hand and I'm gonna use my sponge and build up the coverage and hope that I just need to kind of build it up a little bit to look better on the nose but oh my goodness does that look bad all right i am done blending this i'm pretty sure i liked how it went on with the brush a little bit better i feel like with the sponge if you pick it up and then move it it kind of just like the pigment just sticks right there and then you have to really kind of work on blending whereas with the brush you could just kind of blend it and it went in a little bit better personally it looks okay from a distance for sure but when you get up close and see my nose it almost looks like i have foundation blackheads because it's like really sinking into the pores on the nose i'll try to get a shot in natural light just around this area right here it doesn't look good that could be that photo finish primer as well so i'll continue to play with this and give you guys an update i am going to go in and put on my concealer i'm using the Too faced born this way multi-use sculpting concealer in vanilla i didn't get a new concealer because like i said i am just a very very finicky person when it comes to my concealer so i'm going to pop just a little bit of this on and i will be right back here concealer is done and on camera i think my skin looks great it looks like a blend canvas very very soft but in person the nose just really really looks rough so hopefully that'll warm up throughout this video fingers crossed I did set the concealer just under the eyes with the Ilia soft focus finishing powder this is such a good powder and it's clean so check this out I've been talking about this for a while but let's go ahead and bronze up the skin so I was looking on Ulta's website at like best bronzers and the essence sun club matte bronzing powder this is the dark version and this is the light version so obviously they need to work on their shade range here but if you're a little more fair these seem to work really well especially the reviews they talk about how if you're a fair girl these work really well they have a smell to them it's kind of like beachy i don't know what that is if it's coconutty or what but they definitely have a smell to them i just realized that but i'm gonna go in with a mix of these and see how these work on my skin tone i just like am always searching for the perfect bronzer so i'm always willing to try new bronzers so this is my japanese 716 and we're gonna see how these babies perform i think the packaging 
is really nice. Ooh, that's pretty nice. I think the packaging is nice on these when you're traveling, especially. I just like sleek packaging, so. That is actually really nice. I was a little bit worried you wouldn't even see this on my skin tone, but very nice. I think that that bronzer performed really well. It blended really well and it's really natural on my skin tone. Like I said, I think they definitely need to work on the shade range. Maybe they have other shades available online. Sometimes that happens, but I do not think this is anywhere near enough. But if you are a really fair girl and you struggle with a bronzer that's not gonna be too dark on you or too muddy, you will definitely wanna check these out, especially the lighter skin one. I think it looks really nice and natural on my skin. Like I'm just a little sun-kissed, especially for this time of year. I keep getting a glimpse of my nose when I look in my mirror and it just looks so rough right now. But let's go on to blush, highlight, and lips. So, ah, this ColourPop Disney Princess Collection. I picked up the Belle and Cinderella. What hooked me in was Cinderella. The highlight was so pretty. I've never had the Anastasia um, Razy highlight, but it kind of looks like what I envisioned that to look like, which is why I picked it up. Plus, I, who a girl doesn't love Disney princesses, and they have a bunch. So this is the Disney Designer Collection, Horse and Carriage. I'm not sure if I'm going to love the lip because I think it is a matte lip, right? This is Prince Charming, we'll see. I mean, it, it is a pretty color, but I don't know, we'll see. But like I said, what hooked me here was the highlight because it's so pretty. I mean, look at that, that is so cute. Oop, there goes the little insert, but um, hello, really, really pretty. It looked beautiful when I swatched it on the back of my hand. I think you guys will be able to kind of, yeah, you can see, it just looked so pretty. So let me open up the bell because, oh, it opens up like this. I was opening it the wrong way. Okay, so here is Belle. This is a blush, which I was torn between this and another one. I can't remember what it is, but here's what the packaging, hello, looks like. And then this is the blush. I thought it would be a nice natural blush, especially for winter. Again, I just kind of go a little bit more towards neutrals and I thought that was really pretty. Can you guys see that? It's just, it's almost like a blush topper, but we'll see. And here is the lip. That might be a little bit more up my alley. This might be a little too pink. Maybe we'll do a mixture of both of them, but let's go ahead and start with the blush. So this is Enchanted Mirror and I have never had a ColourPop. I love that it comes with a mirror as well. These were both $18, which isn't bad for a blush and a lipstick the bronzers were $4.99 each and the foundation i forgot to mention that was 36 so we're getting up there in price but i thought i really wanted to try Ooh, it's pretty powdery i'm dipping in with this and there's kind of a lot coming off maybe this isn't the brush i should use i'm going to switch over to this japanesque brush yeah no it's there's still a lot of kick up here but i've always wanted to try a color pop blush oh yeah that is really pretty I love it I love 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 this color it really just looks so natural like that is the actual color when I'm kind of like flush you know that I blush so that is like the perfect color for me there were a lot of different colors as well I think I can't remember what the other one is if I can find it I'll put in a picture but I I'm gonna go back for more of these probably because I like it that much. But let's go ahead and get this highlight on. So this is the Horse and Carriage, the Cinderella highlight. Ugh, it is so pretty. You guys know I'm a sucker for a good highlight. And that's another one. I have a hard time finding like the perfect highlight, so I'm hoping this is it because it has a mirror as well, which is perfect. So let's see. It has, that's interesting, it almost has like a pinky blue undertone to it. More pink comes through. But you can kind of see like a blue to it. Like on this side I feel like I can see more of the blue and on the other side I could see a little bit more of the pink but it does look like it's highlighting the texture on my forehead a little bit. 
Yeah, I guess it is highlighting a bit of the texture right there. I think you guys can see that on camera. But that is a very, very interesting undertone. It's like pink and blue. I can't wait to look that up online and see if I'm actually right in that train of thought. I think if you guys are Disney fans or if you have a kid who's big into Disney, they would love to have this sitting on their little desk or whatever they have. I think this is a super, super cute idea. I didn't think I was going to want to get that when I saw like all the marketing around it, but once I saw it in store, I needed it. So let's go ahead while we're here and get these lips on. Normally I do lips last, but I'm, I'm pretty excited to try these. So I think I am going to go with the darker version especially since it's fall time so this is called beast i think this is their regular matte formula and i'm not like the biggest matte lip person but we'll see so after getting this on i'm actually wondering if this is like an ultra blotted lip no it's a luxe liquid lip you know what i'm gonna add a little bit of the cinderella color over it because i think that this might be slightly too dark for my liking so let me try to mix these Ooh, there's almost like a tingly feeling all right you guys this is the lip this is a very very comfortable matte lip it feels oddly hydrating for a matte lip and the formula itself is not like very liquidy it's more of a stiff drier formula not dry in a sense of it's going to dry out your lips but dry in a sense of you won't make a lot of mistakes when you go in a lot of times when i go in with a matte lip it's too liquidy and i make mistakes pretty fast you won't do that with this one it's a really easy to use formula so we'll see how i'm feeling towards the end of it i feel unbalanced right now because typically i don't go in and do my lips first i do the eyes and the brows so let's get these brows on i apologize someone is vacuuming right now or doing something outside but it's Saturday morning and people have to get things done so I picked up the Anastasia their little brow kit this is the melt proof they had two other versions they had like the best brows and then like an ombre brow I picked this up because I've never had one of their pomades I picked up medium brown which is typically what I do these look like they actually are full-size products except for the brush I think the brush is a small version which is awesome so I've been dying to try this right here Nikki makeup uses this instead of a pomade sometimes but I'm gonna go in and try to do some really cool brows with both of these I've heard that this is very pigmented if you go in and just go in with that so I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna start with the pomade and we'll see how this goes I'm gonna kind of fast forward through this because I can do a full video on my brows alone it would take way too long but we'll see how, how it performs as I fast forward through it and then you guys can see the finished product by the way the number 12 brush is my absolute favorite brush when it comes to doing brows in the world I think everybody needs this brush whoa that was pigmented all right, so that is just the dip brow, which obviously I'm going to have a learning curve because that is really heavy for me for brows especially. So I'm going to go in with the gel here. And this might be a terrible idea because it's already a very strong brow, but I'm just going to run this through. I mean, that wasn't bad. That didn't make a mess especially for being it's not a big spoolie but it's bigger than some of them and it didn't make a mess or anything like that so this is going to be a very very strong brow day for me so let me go ahead and even these out all right i finished up the brows and i'm not gonna lie this is way too strong for me i am way more of a natural brow person and both the gel and the dip brow are so pigmented there's not a lot of room for error so i typically like fill my brows in like all the way i definitely think if you're going in with either one of these you need to do like brow hair strokes this is so stark for me seeing myself in the viewfinder it's crazy. I also went in like way too heavy up front here and then tried to kind of fix it and it just does not look good. I also have like, that is not drawn on right there. That is brow hair right there. And then I don't have brow hair right here. I just got my brows threaded and she, I go to the same place all the time, but she did a 
some not so good job this time. Everybody has an off day and it's fine, but I think she took off a lot more here than she did here. And I don't want to take this off to even it up because then it's just going to be a hot mess. So I'm moving on from these right now. I think I just am going to have a little bit of a learning curve with these. So again, I'll update you on that as I kind of get used to these products, but we got some brows today. So let's go in with this liquid eyeliner. One of you actually told me to pick this up. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Liquid Eyeliner, the super slim version. So we're gonna try this out. This is like their Halloween version. So they give you a little stencil for a bat, but I'm gonna try doing just a little wing. That's all we're doing. We're not gonna go in and do any kind of, let's see if this is made out of metal, hold on. It's literally just a little plastic stencil if you wanted to, you know, like do a little bit of that for Halloween or something. So I'm just going to kind of do this on camera so you guys can see. I definitely don't think this is like the finest tip I've ever seen for liner, but you know, we'll see how it works. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, so that is one side done. It's okay, it's a little too dry for me and it does kind of bleed a little bit. You can see right here, it bled up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of kind of like a notch up there and I don't want to build it up any bigger because then it's going to transfer. So let me do this eye and give you my final thoughts. It's not my favorite off the bat, but it does get in to that little flap if you have a double row of lashes like I do. It does get in there pretty well, so I will give it that. All right, I just wanna show you what I did with this eye here. I just took that same brush I was using with my brows, no product on it whatsoever. And I'm just using that to kind of smooth this out because like I said, that is just not a smooth application at all. It's very skippy, which I don't like. So I don't think I'd use that again. It does get in pretty well to the like little area of the flap that I was talking about, but I wouldn't grab for it again. It's just a little too difficult to use for me, and it's definitely not the most thin brush I've used, so I'm just kind of softening everything up with the number 12 brush. I'm also pretty positive that that's gonna end up transferring up to my hood because I ended up going a lot thicker than I wanted to. So let's throw on the last thing we have here. I have the Kiss Naked Drama Collection lashes in veil. So if you guys know me, you know how much I love chiffon, but I thought that veil was almost like a more toned down version of chiffon over here. So I'm gonna pop these on off camera with a little bit of mascara. I actually have a new mascara here. This is just a sample I got. This is a Charlotte Tilbury full fat lashes and I've always wanted to try this. So when I got a little sample of it, I got really excited and I wanted to try it in one of these types of videos. So let me go put this on. I'm also gonna put a black liner in my upper waterline there and maybe a nude on the lower, but those are not new products. So I'm gonna do all that and I will be back here in just a second. All right, you guys, lashes are on and we are done with this look. Before I put on that mascara, which by the way, not a fan of, I did use the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I have a whole video on this if you're interested. It's just their typical primer water. I don't think this makes your makeup last by any means, but I was hoping it would help out the foundation situation and it didn't. So I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I'm going to take this off the minute I'm done filming this video. The foundation just really threw this look off for me. It looks so bad in person. I was really hoping it would warm up during this video. I have taken a lot of breaks because of, I think they're tuck pointing outside the brick. So they're just making a lot of noise. So I've had to take a lot of breaks. So it's been sitting on my skin for a while and it just looks terrible. Even in these little folds right here, it's starting to crease and just look really makeup-y and heavy. So unfortunately, that's a pass for me. Now you might love that. It might work really well for your skin, but it just doesn't work for me. And I have normal skin. I'm not dry. I'm not oily. It just, my nose, it doesn't want to stick to my nose at all. So there are some things I really did like. I think that the Smashbox collection, the Photo Finish Star Power Primer set is a really good value for your money. I'm gonna keep trying the primerizer, the primer, and I know I like the primer water. So for $22, you can't beat that. As far as the Anastasia kit, I think, again, great value for your money. This is $30. You get the number 12 brush, which is awesome. The pomade and then the gel. I 
I just have a learning curve with this. I do not like my brows right now. It's way too heavy. It's way too makeupy. That's another reason I want to get off here. That's completely my fault. That's not the product's fault. These are very, very pigmented products and they are not going to go anywhere. I just personally like a more natural brow. So learning curve here, but love the number 12 brush. As far as the bronzers from Essence, love them. I think if you are more of a fairer girl or boy, you will love these. It worked really well for my skin tone. I just think they do need to expand on the shade range. The ColourPop collections I love for $18. A lip product and a blush or a highlight is amazing. Love the highlight, love the blush. I do like the lip. Would I grab for this over one of my more shiny products? I'm not sure, probably not. I could keep wearing this. It's not one of those formulas where I'm like, oh my gosh, get it off my lip. It does make my teeth look a little bit yellow. That's just the pinky color, unfortunately. That's not working for me, but for a matte lipstick, I think that it's one of the more comfortable than I, that I've tried. Like I said, didn't love the Charlotte Tilbury mascara. It's one of those standard ones, which to me holds a little too much product. So I wouldn't grab for this again. I definitely prefer my Thrive Cosmetics, the you know liquid lash extensions, or the Maybelline Snapscara. As far as this eyeliner, that is a hard pass for me. It was very, very skippy. I had to go over it with a matte black shadow just to kind of fix everything. It's not transferring, which is good, but that might be due to the eyeshadow as well as far as the lashes also not my favorite they're very long right here and outwards and short here so it just kind of looks funky and they're very stringy so i definitely prefer the chiffon so i'm glad i picked those up as well and i think that is it for this one you guys so i hope you found this video helpful i almost in the middle of it was like i'm not going to post this because this isn't working but this is how it is i'm sure you guys get home sometimes and you're like wow i don't like any of the makeup I bought and and that's just how it is so I thought I would post this and let you guys know that that happens to me as well thank you so much for watching and bearing through this one I know it was difficult when I'm not super into the product sometimes it's hard to be excited in a video but I hope you at least found it helpful if you were debating some of these products I know they're all kind of hot new products that everybody's been talking about so if you have any questions as always please let me know below otherwise if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me please subscribe it means the world to me and I hope to see you in the next one. I am going straight to the bathroom to wash this off. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.